Welcome to Tesla Global, the home of Tesla news. Today we look at Tesla's plan for Texas along with Tesla's Elon Musk ponders 12 volts lithium ion battery replacements for older cars. Let's get into the video. Tesla's plans for Giga Texas prove everything is bigger in the Lone Star State. There's a saying in Texas that everything is bigger. New details about Tesla's manufacturing plant just outside of Austin, known as Giga Texas, reveal that everything really is bigger in the Lone Star State, and Tesla is on its way to having the largest automotive manufacturing facility in the United States. CEO Elon Musk detailed yesterday that the upcoming manufacturing plant just minutes outside of Austin will be almost a mile long when complete, making it so large that you likely have to see it to believe it. The automaker is nearing initial production at the plant, which is scheduled for later this year. While the world's leading electric automaker might not produce a massive volume of vehicles at Giga Texas this year, you can bet that it will be one of Tesla's biggest advantages in automotive manufacturing, especially in the United States, where demand for the company's vehicles continues to grow. On the list of the largest factories in the United States provided by Relist, the massive 2.612 million square foot facility that Kia operates in West Point, Georgia, sits on more than 2,200 acres of land and had a hefty price tag of $1 billion. Kia has operated this plant since 2009, and it has remained the largest manufacturing factory in the United States since that time. However, Giga Texas just may have the size to displace the massive Kia plant, putting it into second place if Musk's calculations are true. After purchasing an additional 381 acres of land adjacent to the already 2,100 acres Tesla owned, the company is already planning to set its most advanced facility on the largest piece of land that a factory sits on in the country. 2,481 acres will outfit the estimated 1.7 million square feet that the main structure will sit on. The second facility will be an additional 900,000 square feet, with the final building tacking on another 1 million square feet, swamping the Kia facility with an estimated 3.6 million square feet of manufacturing floor space for Tesla to roam around on, a million square feet larger than the Georgia plant. To put this into perspective, the Tesla Fremont factory is only 510,000 square feet and growing. However, Tesla's flagship facility in the Northern California landscape has been a challenge for the automaker as production efforts increase and demand follow suit. The company has opted for temporary, and now permanent, spring structures to expand manufacturing space. Musk added that Giga Texas is roughly seven stories tall, with every floor being double in size. Additionally, he expects the facility to grow by about 500 feet over time. He did not detail how he expects the facility to continue growing, but it could have something to do with the highly speculated Project Bobcat that was listed in the Texas State Public Filings just a few months ago. When Giga Texas begins production later this year, it will be responsible for Model Y, Cybertruck, Model 3, and semi-production for the eastern half of North America. Tesla's Elon Musk ponders 12 volts lithium-ion battery replacements for older cars. Elon Musk recently hinted at a very welcome and simple update for Tesla's vehicles, especially those which have already replaced their 12-volt batteries in the past. According to the CEO, Tesla would be looking into the idea of equipping older vehicles with a 12-volt lithium-ion battery, similar to the Model S Plaid. Musk's update came as a response to Tesla owner Rich Tier, who inquired if it was possible to have the company's older vehicles be equipped with the company's newer 12-volt lithium-ion battery. This was a good point considering that the conventional 12-volt lead-acid battery used in vehicles like the Model 3 and Model Y tend to get discharged, in some cases, multiple times per year. In his response, Musk stated that Tesla would try to roll out such an initiative, especially as it would be beneficial for the company's cars. A 12-volt lithium-ion battery would last far longer than a conventional lead-acid battery, after all, and according to Musk, Tesla's goal is to reduce service in its vehicles anyway. Unlike other makers of cars, our goal is not to profit from service. Best service is not needing service in the first place, Musk noted. Images of Tesla's 12-volt lithium-ion battery that's currently used in the Model S Plaid show that the company has come up with a design that seems far more lightweight and compact compared to traditional 12-volt lead-acid batteries. A look at the Tesla Model S Plaid's owner's manual also indicates that the vehicle's new low-voltage battery has a rating of 6.9 Ah and 15.5 volts. While a shift to a low-voltage lithium-ion battery would be a welcome change for electric vehicle owners, the new battery would also present some challenges in the event that they do need to be replaced. This is because low-voltage lithium-ion batteries are more expensive than conventional lead-acid batteries in the market. It would then be interesting to see how Tesla manages the cost of its vehicle's low-voltage battery replacements. 
What is quite interesting is that Tesla has already used lithium-ion batteries for its vehicle's low-voltage needs in the days of the original Roadster. Instead of a separate 12-volt battery unit, however, Tesla opted to tap into the all-electric sports car's main battery pack for its low-voltage needs. These initiatives were largely unsuccessful, which became one of the reasons why the company shifted to the use of conventional 12-volt lead-acid batteries from the Roadster 2.0 until the Model Y. SpaceX Starship briefly becomes largest rocket in history, now what's next? On August 6, after a great deal of anticipation, SpaceX stacked a Starship on top of a super-heavy booster for the first time ever, very briefly assembling the largest rocket in history. However, barely an hour after the two stages were integrated and, presumably, latched together, SpaceX lifted Starship, S-20, off the booster, returned it to its transport stand, and rolled the ship back to the build site later that day. Though an extreme sensitivity to wind conditions has delayed the procedure, Super Heavy Booster 4, the 4, also appears to be on track to be removed from the orbital launch mount and sent either back to the factory or to a suborbital launch mount that's been modified for booster testing. For those that follow the process closely in the days and weeks prior, the fact that Starship's first full assembly was just a fit check, and, really, more like 50-50 between fit check and photo op, came as no surprise. In the lead-up, it became clear through several reports that CEO Elon Musk had challenged SpaceX to stack Ship 20 and Booster 4 by August 5th and flown in several hundred employees normally stationed elsewhere to accomplish the feat. Ignoring weather delays that prevented stacking on August 5th, SpaceX met Musk's challenge in all but the literal sense, assembling the world's largest rocket into one integrated stack for the first time ever. Even more significantly, despite the fact that SpaceX could have easily decided to stack two not for flight prototypes to sort of achieve the same feat, both stages, Ship 20 and Booster 4, involved in the August 6th milestone are nominally destined for flight. Barring surprises, the same exact pair is scheduled to support Starship's first orbital test flight as early as this year. Before they can be cleared for flight, however, a great deal of work must still be completed, work that in some cases is unprecedented in the history of the Starship program. Not long after the stacking milestone, Musk himself sketched out a few of the tasks still in front of the rocket. Namely, Musk says that SpaceX must still complete Starship S-20's partially finished heat shield, install some form of heat shields to protect Super Heavy Booster 4's 29 naked Raptor engines, finish installing, plumbing, and activating 4-7 to seven massive custom propellant storage tanks, and assemble, install, and activate a giant mechanical umbilical arm on the launch tower to fuel and power Starship. All are undoubtedly crucial and Starship is unlikely to launch before any of them are more or less complete. However, the booster and ship themselves are arguably far more of a pressure point. Before they can be deemed ready for flight, both the ship and booster must complete unprecedented test campaigns on the ground. Ship 20 will need to complete cryogenic proof testing to verify that the first Starship with six Raptor engine mounts is structurally sound. SpaceX has already modified one of its two suborbital Starship launch mounts for that purpose. Once cryo-proof and hydraulic ram testing is complete, those six rams will likely be removed and six Raptor engines will be installed in their place, potentially setting up Ship 20 to become the first Starship prototype to static fire six engines, and any number of Raptor vacuum engines. Super Heavy Booster 4 will be faced with an even more ambitious static fire test campaign as SpaceX likely gradually installs more and more engines. Depending on how focused SpaceX is on speed over thoroughness, that process could involve gradually adding two to five engines after every static fire or could result in SpaceX starting with four to nine engines and then immediately jumping from nine to a full 29 Raptor static fire. Only after completing those crucial qualification tests is SpaceX likely to stack Ship 20 and Booster 4 for a second time and enter the first true full-stack Starship launch flow, hopefully culminating in the first orbital launch attempt later this year, but only as soon as the FAA completes an environmental review and approves the rocket's launch license. Technically, FAA approval could come tomorrow or it could take the agency a year or more, it's almost impossible to predict without official information. However, given SpaceX's track record with Starship prototypes and Booster B3, it's likely that a flight-worthy Starship and Super Heavy will be stacked on the pad and ready to launch just a few months from now. Do you think Tesla will stick to the plan of replacing old cars with 12-volt lithium batteries? Or will it be too expensive? If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and if you are new to the channel then why not subscribe? Thanks for watching the video.